One of the coolest things about Iron Man is getting to see his armor constantly update to become sleeker and more sophisticated. From the awkward beginnings to innovations like the Extremis armor, the Hulk Buster, this liquid one, and this one with gigantic legs, the design of which baffles me. I mean, surely he'd snap his shins in half every time the armor bends its knees, right? Right? Either way, that isn't the only armor with a questionable design choice. Iron Man's mask alone is iconic, and much like Tony himself, is pretty... stark. It's not much going on there. But there was a short run when Iron Man's mask had an additional detail to it. Let's see if you can spot the difference. It's a little on the nose. Can you believe it's been like three years and this is the first Iron Man video I've made? Well, if you don't count the very first video on the channel, that's just me shooting off fireworks dressed as the Golden Avenger. Boy, how the times have it's barely changed. But yes, from Invincible Iron Man number 68 to 85, Tony wore a suit which for the first time included a little bump for his nose. That's right, a whole 18-ish issues. The legend goes that during the 70s, Stan Lee, the head guy at Marvel during that time, was walking through the Marvel offices, caught a glimpse of an Iron Man comic and remarked, shouldn't he have a nose? Even though Stan just casually noted that it would be hard for Tony Stark to fit his nose under that flat mask, the writers and artists took that to mean Iron Man needs a nose! Stat! The very next issue featured a story in which Tony Stark's current mask, not the armor, just the mask, was damaged by an underwater explosion. He races back to Stark Industries where he builds a brand new mask that will hopefully fare better underwater. And while he doesn't specifically cite the nose for this, Tony explains that he modified the appearance of the mask to, quote, allow a bit more expression to show, and so perhaps increase the fearsome aspects of my character to those who oppose me. And it's working! Oh god, that nose is terrifying! Kill it with fire! But like I said, this new nasal helmet didn't last very long in the comics. In issue number 85, Tony's suit is damaged beyond repair, so he's forced to build a brand new one. One that's activated by a wrist-mounted bracelet and watch, sort of similar to what we saw in the first Avengers movie. You might be wondering why they got rid of the nose mask. Was it due to an outcry of the fans who hated it? Was it a defiant artist who refused to draw that silly design? Nope. None of that. In fact, some people took Stan's order to put a nose on Iron Man so seriously that when a production manager's assistant went through and painted over the nose with whiteout, thinking that the artist just made a mistake, he accidentally caused a shouting match between the artist and the production manager over the missing nose. Even though they took the addition of the nose seriously, that didn't mean they couldn't make fun of it in the comics anyway. In issue number 72, Iron Man visits the San Diego Comic-Con. The attendees think he's just a mere Iron Man cosplayer and comment on his ugly, and ridiculous nose. But really, that's all they could do. As far as everyone knew, the nose was there to stay. I mean, Stan Lee's word around the office was treated as law, so who could possibly overturn his demands? Who was even able to get the artists and writers to defy Stan Lee? There's only one person, and that person's name is Stan Lee. Yeah, about two years after Stan commented about Iron Man's mask needing a nose, he took another stroll through the Marvel office. At this point, Stan was busy being a celebrity and rarely ever glanced at the comics themselves. When he caught a glimpse of an Iron Man cover and saw the nose that was put there because of his own remarks, he asked, What's this? Why is this here? Looks kind of strange, doesn't it? And that would put an end to the whole affair. This was not an isolated incident either. Stan Lee had a habit of making an offhand remark to the artists or writers who would treat his word as law. Meanwhile, Stan would forget the entire exchange moments later and even walk by again to leave a comment that completely contradicted his first criticism. Around the same time, an artist named George Russos was tasked with coloring the cover of an issue of Master of Kung Fu. Marvel's editor-in-chief, Jim Shooter, wanted Russos to color the cover green, but Russos refused. You see, legend had it that Stan Lee hated the use of the color green and would fire any artist who would prominently feature green on the cover of a Marvel comic book. If you do a Google image search for Marvel comics during that era, you'll find that typically the only time green is prominently featured is when Hulk is on the picture. But even still, this Kung Fu cover was going to be very green. Shooter and Russos argued back and forth for a while about the color before Shooter finally decided to march into Lee's office and show him the green cover to get his opinion on it. To everyone's surprise, Stan liked it. As it turned out, he never really had a problem with the use of the color green. Once again, Stan had just made a casual comment that everyone treated as a hard and fast rule. What do you guys think? Do you happen to like Iron Man's mask with a nose? Did Stan Lee have a dangerous level of influence at Marvel back then? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about it down there. So there you go, a quick little Iron Man video for you guys today. If you didn't catch the news, I'm in the process of moving, so just kind of bear with us as that whole thing is situated. But if you want some more Iron Man videos, my friend and editor Dylan released his own today about Iron 
Iron Man and Addiction. It is real good, highly recommended. Go check it out by clicking right here or in the link in the description. And if you want some more Civil War videos, you can also check out this playlist we have right here about how Captain America's shield always comes back to him, who took over for Steve Rogers as Cap when he was frozen, and even videos about Spider-Man and Black Panther that you can watch by clicking right here. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.